Hey guys, thanks for tuning in for another episode of the Detour Live. It's another big episode because, geez, Bike Exchange, JK, they are red hot at Catalonia. I'm joined, as always, by John Iffy Trevorrow and the voice of cycling, <laughs> Phil Liggett. Uh, Iffy, just play the tape again, mate, and this time, bling, did the lead out. <laughs> he did the lead out, and it was just great to see uh, young Caden Groves, who we knew you know, from the first day I saw him starring in the in the bake crits. Oh, I, <laughs> not even a minute in. Not even a minute in. <laughs> I knew he was going to be a superstar. And we've been watching him. He's been spring so well. But this is his first World Tour win. And as Fantastic. you say, let out. Led out by uh, by Bling, and uh, and we're very lucky enough to have Caden with us. So let's throw to the man of the moment. <laughs> there he is, Caden. Thanks for joining the detour, and uh, congratulations, mate. Uh, it was a fantastic victory, and we said to Bling after his victory, mate, be careful because when it rains, it pours, and it feels like you know the the winds are coming a plenty in the team at the moment, and it must be a great vibe. Hey, thanks, I think there's a question uh, for you in there, mate. <laughs> sorry, I, I can't, you're, I can't hear. Um, I can't hear you guys properly. Can you? Can you hear me, mate? Um, Please answer no. Your your audio <laughs> seems to be in slow mo. All right. What what we do is if you click the link um, again. If you click the link again, then it'll reset. We have this problem constantly on the detour, and we try and solve it by talking when there's clearly audio issues, so I'm not sure how that's going to fix it. <laughs> send, him a, send him a message. All right, we'll send him, send him a message, Ify. Uh, we'll get Caden back on, um, and he'll click the link again. And in yeah. fact, I can private uh, message him. Uh, just keep talking, Phil. You're the voice of cycling. Yes. Oh, okay. Phil, well, let's, <laughs> let's talk about the, the rise of the Australians, uh, who normally use the tour down under to find these legs. It took a little bit longer, but, boy, they hit the style this last week or so. Um, it became the tour of Australia, not the tour of Catalonia. I think <laughs> three days, three wins, John. Different, yeah, look, as well, exactly, and different teams too. So last night, yeah. of course, we had Ben O'Connor. There he is, uh, who, who rode away, uh, and uh, there was a strong group chasing him, but they couldn't close it. They looked like we we're about two k out; they were going to get him, but no, he dug in. It sort of had a bit of a false flat. They caught a bit there, but as it went up again near the end, he just went away. Uh, fantastic, and he's taken over the lead. So uh, it's great to see him coming into 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 brilliant form. And of course, we'll get Caden back in a minute so, to talk about his. You're back. Here we go. Can you hear us? I got you. Yeah. Oh, hey. uh, sensational. <laughs> Good morning, Caden. Nice anymore. to see you, mate. Good morning. <laughs> well, well how have you woken up and reflected on on your first ever World Tour victory? You were knocking on the door ever since you started the season, but it it came. It must feel good. Yeah. Um, oh, it was great. Uh, yeah, it was really good. Um, also racing uh, through Catalonia, you know, some familiar roads. It was really nice. Um, and, yeah, I can't thank the team enough for, for believing in me and giving me the opportunity to, you know, continue developing and uh, also just giving me the opportunities to continue sprinting um, at each race we go to. And, yeah, I also knew it was going to come. Like, we were, we were getting so close this season. And, uh, yeah, it's a great feeling to finally get one. Now, a couple of really interesting things with that stage, you know, but, but let's just talk about the finish, which we're just looking at now. I mean, you had Michael Matthews, who only had to run a, a, a place to keep that, that leader's jersey, but he didn't care about that. He gave you a fantastic lead out. And I love the way he looked around as it came around the corner and you just gave him the nod, the nod. Keep going. So he went. And, and I love the way also that he just pulled out at the right time. If he had gone any further, it would have given, like, I reckon, taken uh, um, Phil Bauhaus just a bit too close to the line. But he pulled off right at the right time, which gave you time to get by because there wasn't much in it. No, no, exactly. I, uh, I timed it, well, I wouldn't say perfectly. I was probably a little later than I wanted to be. Um, but yeah, I knew the finish, and uh, with all the information we have these days, uh, yeah, I analysed the finish, and uh, we we did, we had talked about it, so he uh, did the perfect job. 
Well, one of the best analysts in the game is Gavin B, and he said that's one of the more perfect leadouts from the team in the last few years. Sensational. So if Gavin B gives you the thumbs up live <laughs> on YouTube, mate, I think you're doing pretty well. But uh, we, we were saying a bling, yeah. and I said that before when you had audio problems, that we said after his win, when it rains, it pours, um, and it really feels like the, the team are connecting. It sounds like you're really happy with the equipment, and you know, there's just a great vibe uh, in, the, in the group at the moment. For sure, for sure. Uh, yeah, there's been some slight changes uh, for this season and I think everything uh, for the better at the moment. Uh, everyone's happy and uh, as long as uh, we stay healthy, that's uh, that's the next thing. But um, yeah, the team's, team's going really good and it's a great vibe. I was going to say... Good, so, so, uh, let's, sorry, you go, go, Phil. You go, Phil. Yeah. That's a good point, uh, Caden, because what... Um, What's it like? What sort of protection you're making to try and stay well now? Because Richie Port went out with sickness as well. Um, how do, are you guys living in a cocoon more or less when you're not riding the bikes now? Yeah, I guess so. Um, I, I guess so. I mean, this time of year, it's always the peloton usually has quite a lot of sickness, but I think this season more so, like mm. with you know, half of Paranese field and or probably almost half of Torino field uh, getting bronchitis. Um, but I mean, with everything else going on in the world, in the world like, um, I guess we'd be more like cautious anyway with uh, with COVID as well. Yeah. Is it, is it bronchitis that's uh, put bling out uh, and also uh, looks like Yatesy as well? Um, I'm not sure. I haven't spoken to them. Um, but it's it's likely, yeah. Yeah. Now, just going back to that stage win, which, mate, was a great, a great win, but you also had the added uh, challenge in that Yatesy uh, had a little crash, you know, like uh, was it 15, 16K out, and the whole team, yeah. other than the, the new and bling, uh, stopped to wait for him because he was your GC man. So you really – you only had bling. Uh, you didn't – normally you yeah. would have had a couple of others doing the early stuff. Uh, how, how did that all go? Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, we heard on the radio, uh, like Michael and I heard that um, yeah, it did stop. He also needed to, Martin needed the bike change. But um, yeah. yeah, we just, thankfully it was echelon. So it's actually okay to take two guys through an echelon. Um, and especially in this field, like mainly climbers, uh, guys like us can, can move where we want. Um, it's not exactly a classics field. So it's, yeah, so we, we actually did a good job there, just like not having to be on the front because someone was at the back. And then, uh, yeah, we pretty much got a free ride to the line. Uh, we've got another comment from Matt Windsor. He said, is there something in the paella? Nope. As at the last three Aussies are loving this Catalonia. Um, just for the listeners and viewers, it, there still is a pretty good bond amongst the Aussies in you know other teams and in the peloton. And you must be happy to see the fellow compatriot getting the stage with in Ben O'Connor yesterday. For sure. I mean, I think it's great. Uh, it's good to see other Aussies doing well. Um, and yeah, it's uh, the level is, it's also good to show the level um, of the Australians, you know, in the sport. Uh, there's not too many of us, but uh, no, we're, we're certainly uh, pulling our weight. If he... <laughs> yeah, I'd say pulling your weight's a, 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 a good one. So, how'd you go yesterday uh, recovering with the with the mountain top finish? You just uh, sit in the air, or did you have to do something early on? No, nah, no. Nah, today and uh, yesterday is just survival mode for me. Um, we're not sure if there's any more sprint opportunities this week. There, there's two maybes, but um, yeah, especially in a race like this in this field. Um, just trying to trying to get through, um, and yeah, tomorrow is one of those chances. So um, yeah, all eyes for me to, tomorrow, and uh, yeah, that's the next one. So what what's your race calendar looking like, Caden, for the next couple of months? Um, I actually will be going to the Tour of Turkey after this, which is a big goal. Um, it's a good field this year, very good field. Uh, it's pretty much a sprint race, uh, similar similar to UAE, really. Um, one sort of mountaintop finish and the rest are a whole bunch of sprints. And then I will have my break. Um, I'll have some time off racing because I've already had quite a lot of race days. And then I'll start back with probably um, a Dauphiné 
uh, Dauphiné, Poland, Vuelta. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. I, I remember doing Tour of Turkey in 2012 with Green Edge. And the thing that really disappointed me about that race is um, the you'd think that the Suvalakis there would be like classic, you know, but they really skint on the meat. You know, like the classic <laughs> kebabs and stuff. Um, don't make them like Australia. So it was a really big letdown. So if you do let your hair down because you've got a bit of a break. Better check your own Tur- pies, the, the Turkish yeah. delight, different in the markets there. Uh, but... You know, don't don't go near the kebabs, mate. They'll, they'll just let you down, <laughs> particularly coming from Australia. But I mean, uh, so so the next couple of days, as you said, is just survival. And then, what is there any other stages that you sort of got your eyes on towards the back end? There's uh, only a few more left, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Well, stage uh, stage five, um, which is tomorrow, uh, is probably my next goal um, at this stage. It's also a day for the breakaway to arrive, so. Now that we don't have uh, Simon and Matthews, though, we've got a few cards to play. So, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. But five and six are, are maybes. The last stage in Barcelona, it seems to be on a circuit with, with the last mm. little climb on it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that looks also on the profile looks like um, a stage for, like, Michael. But... It's in the past. It's uh, Simon's won that stage, and it's actually very. It's much more selective than uh, it looks. Right. Mm. Yeah, they always get good crowds too on the last day. Yeah, great yeah, that would be good yeah. to uh, be a nice, nice finish actually. Yeah. Now, also uh, yesterday for you guys, uh, eight. Uh, uh, ride by by Dylan, who only got beaten by a, a put. I think he got beaten by as much as you won by, or maybe even maybe even closer. Uh, but yeah. but a very good ride uh, uh, in, in De Pana. Yeah, yeah, it's really good to see um, those boys are up there now for the classics campaign, and I think it's a good way to start. Obviously, he would be very frustrated to uh, to like lose in a photo. Um, but it's good to see his shape is there, um, especially after he like decided to stop Paranese with a uh, with injury. I think so. Um, yeah, yeah. So it's good to see for those boys. And and, and Merlier is in fantastic form as well. So it was a really uh, classy ride, but also a really good ride over in 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 Italy by young Matteo Sabrillo, who who finished second in the uh, in, in the in that stage of uh, the Coppa Batali. Uh, very impressive for a time trialer. Yeah, yeah. Well, I actually I knew he was fast from uh, some some training camps when we were doing some sprints. Uh, but now it's really good by Sobrero um, to come through out of Torino with some good form. So, um, yeah, he'll be one to watch for the for the GC there, hopefully. Good stuff, mate. Well, uh, we won't hold you up too much because uh, you've got another big stage today and then hopefully you open up the pipes tomorrow and let rip in stage five. And Gino gives you full support, mate. I'm sure he will. <laughs> nah, I'm sure. It'll be a good day. Got to get nah, this no, day first. <laughs> that's it, mate. No worries tell, at all. Tell Gene he can jump on whenever he likes. <laughs> I will. No, I cut him off yesterday. Didn't even give him a sign off. So or on Tuesday, so he's probably pissed. But, you, you, uh, forced him, you forced him out, actually, Dan. You didn't just I know. Off. Said, piss off. He said piss off, Gene, and he and he did. Yeah. So <laughs> so, literally. I'd be very very surprised if he clicks the link. But anyway, all you can do is have a crack. Thanks for joining Thanks, us, Caden. Have a good day. No worries. Have a good day. Thanks, Dave. Mark. Congratulations, mate. mate. Fantastic. Yeah. Caden yep. Groves, uh, we're going to have a quick drinks break. And when we come back, more of the detour. Look at this bike. You think it's just a bike, right? But it's not. <clears throat> it's a bike. 374 people are looking at. This guy, this girl, them, all looking at it. People from here, there. And wherever this is, people that are looking for a bike or just a piece of it, amateurs, semi-amateurs and pro-amateurs. This guy wants this bike, but with this crank and these bars, this could be the perfect match. But not this one. This girl has a bike to sell and thousands of people might purchase it. Eyes on bikes help grow small businesses. His, hers, yours, and the latest data and insights help those businesses keep moving. We are the world's number one bike marketplace. 
with over 500,000 products and 900 brands, where buyers and sellers are brought together in a place where a bike is never just a bike. Bike Exchange, where the world buys, sells, learns, and rides. Are you dreaming of the ultimate cycling holiday? Mumu Cycling is the best in the business. Official tour operators for all Grand Tours and Monuments, you will ride the best climbs. Enjoy VIP access and race viewing all hosted by some of the world's best pros, including 17-time Tour de France rider and Paris-Roubaix champion Stuart O'Grady. Start planning your ultimate holiday at www.mumucycling.com. Thanks to what? Bike Exchange and Mumu Cycling. What was that, Ify? What a great voiceover. Sensational. <laughs> how, they, how, how are they going, Mumu Cycling, Ify? You're, you're red hot on the ticket updates. Yes, yes, they've uh, um, they were full for the uh, last part of the Giro, but they've opened it up for a couple more spots. So there are a couple of spots for that last week, ten days, I think it goes for. And just so just jump onto mumucycling.com, m u w m u c y c l i n g dot com, uh, and uh, they've also opened the Tour de France was almost sold out, but they've opened up uh, some extra um, tickets into the Pyrenees, so that should be absolutely sensational. Yep. Uh, so looking forward to it. Great, as everyone says, the, the best in the business. Mm. And uh, if you, you got a text text message, some sad news uh, with the passing of uh, very passionate cyclist uh, David Tap Tapscott. Oh. Yes, so yeah, so you, David, uh, was was only sixty years of age, so it, it, it was pretty sad, really. Uh, and um, he he was a big fan of uh, of you, Phil, <coughs> and yeah, this yeah. was his prize prize uh, prize possession. He got a photo taken with you at, at Tour Down Under, uh, and um, yeah, no, just just a, a really nice guy and. Um, last Saturday, they, the stall riders rode uh, the horse gap, uh, did a big ride in his honor. But, um, yeah, so I've got, I've got a little thing here. So, uh, David, a passionate bike rider, meeting Phil the Tour Down Under, uh, was he, he said one of the best things that happened, uh, ever. Um, an awesome community chap. A fantastic husband, father, organiser of many stall and Portland bike groups uh, to ride the Murray Des Moines, uh, ride for cancer. Uh, and he did that for the uh, Swan Hill and uh, Port Ferry hospitals. Uh, sadly passed away just last week from prostate cancer. So um, oh, yeah, all really of this to sad. his family. Very sad. Absolutely, yeah. yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And to my, we're going to stay on a little bit on the sad side. Um I'm going to the funeral of Colin Lewis tomorrow. He also died of cancer, but he was 80. <clears throat> Colin, in my opinion, along with Les West, probably the best two British cyclists who never made the absolute top of the sport. Les, on a diet of uh, racing at home in Britain, finished fourth in the World Road Race Championships when they were in Leicestershire in 1970. I was there. Yep. Yeah, yep. Jean-Pierre Monsoret was the winner and died a year yep. later when he was knocked off his bike in a race by a car. Um, yeah, uh, uh, Colin was, in fact... The, the year that Tom Simpson died in 1967 on the Tour de France uh, was the man that shared the room with Tom until he passed away on July the 13th on stage 13. How can you forget that date? Mm -hmm. And so, sadly, Colin, uh, I think I expect a huge turnout of the old pros down in, in Devon. It's a long way. I must confess I'm getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning because I can't go any earlier. And uh, I'm, I'm at 11 o'clock down in little quaint place called Bobby Tracy because he was a Devon man. <clears throat> he was born in Wales. He left in, in, went over to Devon at a very young age. He was the scourge of cycling, but he also helped a lot of people. Jeremy Hunt, for example, was, was brought on and discovered by, by Colin Lewis and Jeremy came to love Australia, as you know. Um, yeah. you no, know, it, it'll be a, a sad, but a happy day. He had a fantastic career, but he could have been so much better. Um, Gino, Gene Bates joins us live. Oh. Hey, mate, 
Apologies, I cut you off on the last episode. I just said <laughs> thanks for your time and dropped you like a hot pie. I, I'm surprised it, you come back. It, well, so am I. But um, <laughs> no, I, I, I had something really insightful to say there, and then I was just cut off. So anyway, yeah, sorry, I forgot mate. what it was. Hey, well, Phil. <laughs> nice to see you, mate. Anyway, how are you, Gene? Phil here. Nice to see you. It's been a while yeah. since the tour down under, mate. Probably the last time I saw you. Yeah, I think it was. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's been a little while, isn't it? You're looking well? Yeah, and so are you. You're looking very fit, actually. You're finding time to ride your bike. No, no. A few runs here and there between races. That's oh, about it, these days. That must be it. The long so, road, look. Gene, thanks so much for coming on. I know that you you were a little bit upset about uh, last Tuesday when, when you got the ass <laughs> by, by Dan. And, and he wasn't going to, he did actually text me and say, look, he couldn't come on. He was just feeling so hurt. But I twisted him and said, mate, we really need you. So he said, Fair enough. okay. That was rude. I look back and I just can't understand it. Just not like me. <laughs> Plus, I threw the, I threw the Jerry card. I told him the Jerry was going to be on, but Jerry and he's has, not has, here. He's <laughs> no, not here. Really. He was supposed to be, but he's not here. So he wanted to come on and and, and congratulate uh, Caden. But uh, anyway, well, yeah. now that Jerry's not here, I can just drop you again. Thanks for your time, Jerry. Yeah, thanks, <laughs> thanks, fellas. Good to see you. Uh, you got any questions, uh, hey, John? Well, I have, mate. I, firstly, congrat congratulations. I mean, they always say it's just the bike riders, but there were some big uh, decisions to be made. So you there? You were there for GC with Simon uh, Yates, of course, and who uh, unfortunately has been been pretty crook. But that you had to make a quick decision out the road there when Simon had that little uh, uh, bingle with about 16, 17 k to go on stage two, and so. You had to make that quick decision. So you pull everyone back, but you left Bling uh, and uh, Caden in the front group. You had to make that decision pretty quickly. Tell us about it. Yeah, well, look, fortunately, we have uh, an ex a very experienced group of guys here. Um, and we knew that we were going after the stage. Stage result with Caden, it was a great opportunity for him. And we, it was a bit of a double-edged sword, as you know, sometimes, trying to go for GC and also uh, hunt for those stages. So... In the end, it, it wasn't a terribly difficult decision. Um, we just tried to support Simon and get get him uh, to lose as little time as possible um, in that finish, but also support Caden in the finish. Um, and we'd, we'd lined up Michael as his last lead-out guy anyway. So um, with the other teams like Movie Star and Jumbo, they're really pushing the pace to try and um, make sure Simon didn't come back. We didn't, we didn't need those bigger guys there to do that role as it was. So it, it actually worked out quite well for us, as, as you know. Now, that's a question I'll throw at you. In the old days, uh, I know it was only 16K to go and whatever, but the GC riders, um, you know, if there's a split and you've got a bloke out the back, they go for it. But when you have a puncture, it wasn't, would never used to be uh, the role of the GC riders to put their guys on the front to, to stop someone from getting back on. That, that seems to have changed. Yeah, there's just so much pressure now. There's so much riding on these results um, that teams don't have hesitation at all in, in making life difficult for each other. Um, at, at the time, there was a lot of crosswind, so I mean, their reasoning would have been that they're just looking after their interests in the crosswinds. It just happened to be that Simon was out the back. Yeah, right. Mm. <laughs> uh, Jim, just the racing this year has been one of the best starts of any racing season for years and years because of the way the races are being run. They're exciting to watch. Uh, they're not just the breakaway goes from the gun, gets caught 20k out, sprint all over. This is a real, everybody's attacking now. There's an urgency in the peloton. Um, there's no control by any one particular team. Is this the arrival of the youngsters or the, just is a mass meetings every night for technical talks because of the pressure that you've got to win? But there's no doubt that the racing now is really worth watching from the gun. Yeah, look, I, I don't think it's uh, – I think there's probably less planning in some of these moves. I mean, yesterday, I w obviously, it wasn't there, but in Copy Bartoli, uh, there's the Matthew Van Der Poel's, uh racing there, and he, and he went from 100 kilometres to go and, and tore the race apart. So it's something but, that we're getting more and more frequently in races, um, probably just a lack of, of fear. And and whether that's coming from young guys coming through, like your, your podge cars um, and, uh, and the likes, uh, I'm not sure, but – you can't go in uh, expecting the expected anymore. It's uh, it's a different game, and you have to be ready at all times. 
Yeah. yeah, it's funny, you know, I think COVID has been really a disaster for the world in just about every way, except for cycling, because I can tell you, the cycling since COVID has gone to another level. The the the, the yeah. urgency of the racing is just amazing. And I just wonder whether early on, they didn't know if they, how many races they were going to get. It's just, but that ha just changed the psychology of racing. And now we're just getting... Well, there's no piano anymore. The old days of sitting at a bunch of piano for middle section of a stage. No, that's gone. Yeah, yeah, spot on. And uh, even the the preparation races. I was in uh, Ruta del Sol, Andalusia, and uh, that was probably one of the hardest editions we've ever seen. Um, and it used to be one of the races you'd go there, set semi half done, get the racing in the legs, and then be better for for March. But now you have to prepare for the preparation races. <laughs> so that you're you're actually able to be competitive. But as you said, even the preparation for like team meetings and stuff. I mean, everyone's got powerpoints, everyone's got documents. I mean, has that evolved in your time as a DS? Like the amount of hours that you need to put into preparing for these races and the team meetings? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I look. I don't know what other teams are doing, but I know uh, certain teams that are doing. Pretty much what we do, which is a lot of uh, background work into the course, into the weather, into roles and responsibilities for the guys. Um, and there is there's a lot of background work that happens even before you get to the race. Do you still have a guy like Julian Dean back in the day that used to be the master at pulling the bits of grass out, throwing it in the air, <laughs> and then just seeing, you know, if it was 5 or 10K, where the wind was coming from, at what point in the course? I don't think anyone's able to do that as well as uh, nah, Jules. As he was. was took the words out. I was just going to say, of, has the technology the improved? He took the words out of my mouth there. He because, would even uh, pick the right <laughs> grain of grass. Like he said, no, 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 don't pick that grass. That won't give you a fair <laughs> reading. Way. Yeah, yeah, so, so I think yeah. in, in all seriousness, I think it's a really good example that at the time he was using blades of grass to work out what was going on with the weather and, and uh, Sky would show up with these big contraptions of oh, yeah. with bells and whistles and steam coming out of it to tell him the same thing. So <laughs> sometimes uh, you can overthink the, the small stuff. Well, we used to love when Sky would roll up because we'd swap lunches with him. And they always had better, like, prepared rolls and fresher meat. And we'd swap them out, sort of, bread and crab meat. <laughs> what, why would – I can understand why you were swapping. Why would they be swapping with you? Well, they, they only swapped us once because we stitched them up. <laughs> I think four blokes booked up crook because of that crab meat. But uh, yeah, have, no, I, I reckon right. they would have changed their protocol after that. <laughs> they did. No more swapping lunches. They did. Look, I, I was lucky enough to have uh, ha have dinner with uh, Jerry and Val Ryan uh, last Sunday night. And Val was talking about her wonderful times uh, on the tour. And she talked about some wonderful stories, travelling with me in the car and having uh, lunch uh, here and that there. But then that, she said... Yeah. And then she said, but she just loved the times uh, with with uh, Dan uh, and the Kiwi uh, and just said, couldn't stop laughing. It was just uh, amazing. And that ham and cheese roll we got that day. It was the best we've ever had. We just found this little bakery and we still rave about it. The secret was g'day, no crap. Great, Trish. No crap, mate. Uh, now, you I think you're going to you're gonna go, don't you, Phil? You've got to head and get your car service. Yeah. <laughs> More than service, you've got to get it fixed. Yeah, well, you got to get the wires out. right, mate. When it when it comes to the batteries, right. mate, just take hey, your time, mate. Of course. And um, mm. I'm looking forward to eventually getting to see you manage your team again soon. I hope. Anyway, classics are coming. Ambitions will be great, and I will be on Paddy with Brady. Yeah, well, not exactly on it. I'll be in a studio in London, but at least I'll be. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. Well, well okay, th guys. thanks, Phil. We're going to keep keep you on for a Good few stuff. more minutes if we could, Gene. I don't want to give you the ass at all, say ever. <laughs> all right. you can Phil say, needs to go. So, well, can I give Phil the boot? Yes, you can fill the boat. Yeah, be rude to Phil. me. Be rude to me. Ciao. Bye. Good to see, see you, Phil. Phil. Take no, care. He's see gone. Him. See you, Phil. Cut him off at the knees again. <laughs> Cut him off. It's, it's the Jan, uh. Dan Jane slice on the podcast. You get one chance, you're out. Now, what else do you want to talk to Gene about? Well, I, I was going to talk about what's God. coming up, but but with full respect. Um, so you had two wins in the first two days and then a great win by young uh, Ben O'Connor last uh, yesterday in, in uh, Catalonia. But also uh, yesterday, uh, Dylan Gronovagan only 
beaten by a poofteenth by Tim Merlier, who's in great form. So it was a very good sprint. And they, you know, they both dragged it to the line. There was nothing in it. But also, and a great ride by young Matteo uh, Sobrero, who's a, a time, he's Italian time trial time, time champion. But he sprints pretty well as, uh, as well. Yeah, look. I tell you what, it's been a big, uh, big four days for the team. As he said, two wins straight up here, and then uh, two second places uh, with nothing in it yesterday. Um, yeah, it's, it's been uh, a great week for us, and a lot of preparations going into this period of time, as you can, as you can imagine. Um, yeah, Mateo's. Yeah, we didn't hire him as a sprinter, um, but he's towed up some pretty quick guys in that group down there, Bloody which hell. is a great sign yeah. for his preparation towards the Giro. And yeah. uh, someone was saying to me that uh, I think it was uh, uh, actually Caden just before said he reckons he's a good chance for the overall of uh, uh, of uh, Coppi Batali. Yeah, well, I mean that's what that's what he's there for. Um, he can time trial. He's the Italian time trial champion, but he can also climb. Um, so he provides great support, um, particularly around the Grand Tours. But also in a race like Coppi Batali, it's uh, perfect for him to go for a, an overall or an overall result himself. Now, Stop. we've got an absolutely great um, week or two weeks of, of cycling coming up. We've got, so we've got the E3, which is uh, on, on tomorrow. Uh, again, we'll have a game uh, on Sunday for the men and the women. Uh, towards Vlanderen uh, on uh, the 30th for the men and women, which is what next uh, Wednesday. Uh, then the Ronde van, Vla van Vlanderen the following weekend on the Sunday for the men and the women. Uh, Scala Prize. Amstel Gold, the Bronze Pile, Parra Bay, men and women. And it's I see they got the it's stacked, and they and they Parra Bay. They got the women on first, and uh, I guess say I reckon there was more publicity before the women's Parra Bay last year. Of course, it was the first uh, that than even for the men. What did you think of that? Oh, it was a, a long time coming. I mean, they've been talking about a women's Parra Bay for years. Um, it was great to finally see they've got one, and I think they did a, a fantastic job, the women in the race, and I think we'll see a lot more action this year. But just going back to your point about how much racing's on, it's um, it's madness. There's uh, one of the busiest periods of the year. Um, outside of the classics, which is huge in itself, we've got Tour of Basque Country, Tour of Turkey, Tour of Asturias, which are all preparation races towards the Giro as well. And then at the, and then at the start of the month of May, we have the Giro. Now, we were talking yes. to Whitey the other day. Uh, are you spewing that um, the team didn't get on the Netflix series for the Tour de France this year, mate? You could have been a global superstar, Gino. Me, me personally? No, yeah. not so much. I, I'm not, <laughs> as you know, I'm not that way inclined. Whitey, on the other hand, I think he was pretty devastating. Oh, mate, you're a media pig. <laughs> Don't talk it down. You love this stuff. <laughs> yeah, being mics for 24 hours a day. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what I get up in the morning for. Yeah, that's yeah. it. That's it. Getting cut off on podcast, mate. Right? Doesn't get any better than that. Have you got so anything no, else? You look, were, I yeah. think I think uh, it would have been a really good positive uh, thing for for a lot of teams. I don't know. I don't. I haven't been following. I don't know. Is it going ahead still, or yeah, they I get enough so. interest? Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, they got eight teams locked and loaded. So U U I E knocked it back, and who was two of the big? I think was it Jumbo knocked it back as well. Two of the no, big Jumbo, teams knocked Jumbo it back. In. Because I was oh, talking so to George Bennett the other day okay. and said you should okay. on the bike lie and get in other he, jumbo he riders. Rides head. The, he rides for UAE now, mate. Yeah, yeah no, but I said like because they're the uh, opposition, he can play mind games and say to uh, one of the riders, "Hey, I was listening to the Netflix producer and he was saying that he overheard a conversation. <laughs> one of the teammates was paying you out. I don't know. I just just heard it. <laughs> just heard on the great one. Yeah, just cause some fights. That's what I'd do." Yeah. Oh, I think it's I think it's fantastic. I think it's great. I, I yeah. hope the teams get the kickbacks as well from that, not just the well. I think the, uh, if race you look organizers. At what, you look at what it did for Formula One. You know, particularly mm. with the viewing numbers and just the popularity of the sport. I mean, if the flow and effect is just for cycling as a whole, um, it's win win because people fall in love with the characters. So, if they want to watch more cycling throughout the year, hopefully that yeah flows into more value for the sponsors and. As long as Jerry's happy, mate, you laugh. I, I tell you what, there's some interesting characters in cycling, as you as you oh, well know. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think it'll, it'll really? make the uh, the F1 <laughs> series look like a bloody trip to the library. Yeah, yeah. I think they, I, I think it was an absolutely ridiculous mistake uh, of of them not to bring um, 
bike exchange uh, go in because you've got uh, a men's and women's team full of characters and they have stuffed up big time. But anyway, that's their their loss, as they say. Their loss. Yeah, yeah. that's it. So, yeah. my, my, I, I know that you're under the pump as well. I know you'd just love to just give us the flick and just say, sorry, guys, you all got the ass. But before you go, Gene, <laughs> um, what <laughs> what's, <laughs> what's your uh, uh, program coming up? What, what races are you looking after? Uh, so I've just come off a big block now. Um, as I said, I was in Spain earlier, uh, late Feb, and uh, in Australia with you, Johnny, at those yeah. races. And then um, I was at um, Strada Bianca, Milano Torino, Milan, uh, San Remo, Torino Adriatico, and then finishing off here with Catalonia. So I'll take a little spell for a couple of weeks and then head to Tour of Turkey, which will base around a team with uh, Caden Gross and, the, and his sprint group, yep. and then uh, directly onto the Giro from there after some uh, some recon with Simon. Good stuff, mate. Yeah. I'll, see, I'll see you in Budapest, mate. It's only yeah, a month look away. Forward to it. Five weeks. Look forward yeah. to it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks for that, guys. Good on you, Gino. Thanks, this is a Thanks, much Keith, better mate. sign off this time. I haven't cut you off. <laughs> it's been a blood. Oh, he's cut me off. <laughs> <laughs> he's cut me off. Oh, oh, well very Gino. well done. <laughs> yeah. uh, Chris Blockley says, so glad to see more women's riding on TV. Hear, hear. Um, I think they're going to get more and more classic coverage throughout the year, um, which is good to see. Uh, anything you want to add before we wrap things up? Well, just that. I, I, that's what I was t- touching on before. So we've got – these are the races coming up that have got a men's and women's in these Belgian classics. So you've got Ghent, Wevelgem, Dwarves, uh, Dwarves Don, Don Vlanderen, Ronde von Vlanders, Amstel Gold, um, Paro Bay, Flesh Wallon, and Liège, best on Liège. Every one of those races has got a men's and women's race. That is just amazing. Now with the Women's Tour de France, Women's Giro, which we've had for a few years, but that seems to be stepping back up again. Uh, yeah, it's going to be an amazing uh, uh, year for the ladies. And, you know, it's becoming so much more professional. They're putting on great races as well. But mm. that's been something that's been very moving. But the professionalism of women's cycling is taking a big step. And, uh, you know, as I said, if I had the money to put into a pro team, I'd be – First thing I'd do is sponsor a women's team. I reckon oh, that's sure. fantastic value for money. Hundred mm. uh, percent. As we always say, guys, YouTube, guys, YouTube.com forward slash the Detail Podcast. Make sure you tick the subscribe button and tell your mates so that you know whenever we go live with a show. And no doubt, because we've got so much racing, as you said, we've got E3, we've got Gent Welvingham. Uh, we'll probably check in again on Tuesday if he and uh, give an update from all the action on the weekend. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's going to be a great. I'm really looking forward to the weekend. I was sitting in, I think I told you, I was sitting in a little coffee shop the other day, and a guy came up and he said, I was just looking at you uh, on the Detour podcast. And he said, I, I love it. And, and he said, Why does Dan give you such a hard time? I said, Because he's an asshole. But yeah, yeah. that's it. <laughs> well, just, just tell the truth, mate. That's it. <laughs> now, off the show, we do get along. So that's why we've got chemistry. We've got no, Brandon. We can give each other shit. Up. Don't make things up. Uh, right. Eh? <laughs> let's, let's take this offline in corporate terms. <laughs> and uh, we'll have a chat. Anyway, thanks for tuning in, guys. Thanks for the support. And we'll see you again on Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. Till then, take it easy. This is the winning ride of the Tour de France.